it's pretty much impossible to talk about the San Jose Sharks right now without even mentioning Curtis Gabriel. Welcome back, Twisters. Nick here. Today I'm going to be talking about Curtis Gabriel of the San Jose Sharks because he's been appearing in quite a few games recently, and we want to talk a little bit about his stats, his performance, his impact on the team, and I want to know in the comments below, what do you think of Curtis Gabriel so far? Do you expect him to stay in the lineup, or do the Sharks even consider extending him beyond this year? I want to know down in the comments, and make sure you leave a like, because it helps other Twisters like you discover this content. So quickly on Curtis Gabriel, he's listed at 6'4", 200 pounds, might even play a little bit above his weight right there, He's 27 years old, almost 28, and prior to joining the Sharks, he played in just 38 NHL games with the Wild and with the Devils, and he racked up 108 hits and 98 penalty minutes in just those 38 games right there. So let's look at his statistics. He's only appeared in eight games in Teal, but of course he's been playing a lot more recently. He's been in the last seven games for San Jose right there, so he's at eight total games played, racking up 21 penalty minutes, he has uh, an ice time average of 7 minutes and 54 seconds. He's got 9 blocked shots in those 8 games, and he has 33 hits, which is quite a lot. And we're going to see exactly how that translates to the rest of the team's performance right there. I also want to quickly look at his advanced stats because there are a couple items of note here. So when you look at that core C4 percentage, that looks dismal at first, right? It's at 38.4, and it's essentially a, um, a way of gauging the team's possession of the puck and the shots that they generate versus that of their opponents right there. So usually somebody above 50%, that, that means that the team is in possession of the puck and generating more chances when that player is on the ice. So you wouldn't think that Gabriel is making any impact there. However, I want to point to two things. First of all, it's at the very end of that row right there, defensive zone start percentage, 78.3% of faceoffs. Gabriel is in the defensive zone right there. So this guy is playing in his end quite a bit right there. And really when you watch him out there, he's if anything, he's going to just chip the puck into the other team's zone. He's not going to chase in after it unless it's to, you know, maybe force a turnover or something like that. But it isn't for sustained offensive pressure. So you do have to absolutely consider that right there. You also want to consider that his on-ice save percentage is actually pretty good. It's 917. That's uh, toward the end of the row right there. So when he's out there, the goaltender, whether that's Devin Dubnik, who's been playing more recently, or Martin Jones, that's the save percentage right there is 0.917, which is pretty good. That is definitely above the Sharks' average. And the goaltending has overall been a little bit better over these last few games. Yeah, Dubnik was... He, he led in a couple of softies there in the third period against Vegas, and credit Vegas for their comeback, absolutely. But nonetheless, Dubnik has been playing better. Jones was good in his last start as well. So Gabriel... Uh, his advanced stats actually look pretty good, despite the small sample size right there. Now, with Gabriel in the lineup, the Sharks' record right now is 3-4-1, and one, which doesn't sound like much, but let's uh, consider a couple of things. So, five games right there against Vegas, who is just absolutely wiping the floor with us. <laughs> we have to be honest about that. But you do consider that four of those five losses have been one-goal games right there. So, th we've been in tight contests against maybe the best team in the NHL. And yeah, of course, you know, bad teams find a way to lose games. Good teams find a way to win games. And that is certainly the case right here. But nonetheless, San Jose has been pretty much step lockstep with uh, Vegas in most of those games right there. The team's goal differential in those eight games is actually a plus one. So that's pretty good considering five of them are against Vegas. Two of them were against the Anaheim Ducks and one was against the Blues right there. The Sharks are averaging... 2.75 goals for in these last or in these eight games with Curtis Gabriel in the lineup. On the season, they're at 2.81, so just marginally a little bit worse. But their goals against has actually been a lot better, despite having to play a team with as much firepower as Vegas. And as we know, they are missing some personnel out there, like Alex Petrangelo. So our goals against in those eight games with Curtis Gabriel in the lineup is 2.625. That's pretty good considering the team is 30th in the NHL with a 3.52 goals against average right there. And then I also wanted to look at penalty minutes and hits as they pertain to Curtis Gabriel. So the team on the season is averaging 20.35 hits per game, which is 20th in the NHL. But with Gabriel in the lineup, and he's averaging a little bit over four hits per game, the team is averaging just over 26 hits per game. So a little bit more physicality with him in the lineup. 
And with penalty minutes, there is a marginal uptick there too. So nine minutes and 20 seconds of penalties per uh, in penalty minutes a game is ninth in the NHL uh, overall on the season right there. And the team is at just under 10 penalty minutes a game with Gabriel in the lineup. So as we saw with the most recent defeat to Vegas right there, penalties were definitely a factor and, and a uh, poor penalty kill uh, because Vegas, despite uh, their power play numbers, it doesn't look like them against the Sharks. They, their power play definitely has a sense of urgency and intensity right there. They got to the Sharks there. It wasn't Gabriel, the guy going to the box. Uh, in this most recent defeat right here, it was guys just making a couple of terrible plays out there, I have to be honest. So uh, penalty minutes go up just a bit with him in the lineup. Hits do go up with him in the lineup right there. And then, of course, you know, Gabriel has been engaging in a few different fights out there as well. So in a four-game stretch, he had three fights. One was against Ryan Reeves. The next one was against Kyle Clifford of the Blues. And then he followed that up with a fight against Nick Deloria of the Anaheim Ducks. So he's been engaging with some of the most intense enforcers out there in the NHL but now we're starting to see that kind of catch on to the rest of the team and we do note that that is against Vegas once again so that blood is definitely going to be uh, boiling over there but in this last contest right there we saw Tomas Hurdle fight Mark Stone and then we saw Logan Couture fight Jonathan Marchessault -so right there so uh, this is something that is maybe starting to wear into the locker room a little bit where this team understands that they have to actually account for uh, you know, their teammates being hit out there or just a way of wearing other teams down through physicality right there. But the thing with the Sharks is that they don't have that high-end skill set that they used to. Uh, again, I'm still somewhat disappointed in the performance of some of the uh, top players out there. But, but overall, r regardless of who you look at, that finishing touch for the Sharks isn't there anymore. So this team needs to simplify its game, and, and Gabriel was even talking uh, to Hockey Central at noon about that today. Uh, he was talking about how they are playing more of a four-check style. It, I do see them playing a little bit more north-south in terms of just you know simple uh, entries into the zone right there and using the four-check to hopefully cause turnovers. And it has worked at times even against a team like Vegas right there. And But the thing is, is that the team needs to do a better job of sort of buying into the details in order to implement that style of play right there. And of course, as Gabriel has alluded to um, many times in his interviews, you know, they need to account for hits that are being made on the ice and sticking up for their players right there. So that's why you saw Tomas Hurdle uh, engage in a fight with Mark Stone. Hurdle had never fought before. Logan Couture rarely fights, and he almost got into a separate scrap uh, against Max Pacioretty last week right there. So um, you're seeing guys in non-traditional roles in that sense, where typically they're the guys who are supposed to be leading the way via the score sheet. But when that's not happening, they need to engage the other team, you know, whether that's just through making a hit, whether that's by, you know, playing them more tightly along the boards or actually sticking up and dropping the gloves right there. So what do the Sharks do with Gabriel? Are they going to continue inserting him in the lineup? They have three more games against Vegas, but that won't be until the end of the season right there. Or are they going to use a, a slot there to reintegrate somebody like John Leonard or Rudolph Spalsers or maybe somebody else we haven't seen as much this season? I want to know your thoughts about this in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, especially if you're a San Jose Sharks fan. We'll be glad to have you as a member of the Twist Brigade throughout this season and beyond. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Once again, I'm Nick. I'll catch you twisters later. Ciao.